Hindi bago kami kasi sa may kami na slide siya. Ayan. Oh, pala, ikaw yung folk. Yes, mm. thank you. But we have, before I begin, don't forget to tag your friend, friends first. Share this live and uh, guys, this is for free. So, ayan, pagtipunin muna natin sila dito sa ating celebration and uh, new learnings. Ayan. Let's see nga kung... If you will tag your friends, guys, share this live. Ayan. Before I start, shout out kay uh, uh, Jerica Francisco. Hi, everyone. Have a safe and happy day. You too. Welcome. Ayan. So, let's start. Ayan. Uh, thank you, guys, for taking your time. I know it's a Sunday, and it's a great way to end our week with uh, learning about progressive web applications. Okay, so I was already introduced. Again, I am Acha Abe. I am a fourth-year computer science student. I, I am an IT support associate, content creator, and a mentor. So let's uh, get right into it. So first, so these are the contents that we will be learning about today. It's an outline. First, we're going to learn about the introduction to PWA, also known as Progressive Web Applications. In here, we will be learning about the definition, the history, the pros and cons of Progressive Web Applications, followed by the PWA structure, uh, the resources that you will be needing for uh, web app or progressive web application. And then third, I will be uh, guiding you to how to create a basic web application. So transforming a web application into a progressive web application. And finally, we will be learning how we can utilize what we will learn today this year and in the future so and beyond so what you need to know in order to prepare for what's to come and how you you will be able to create an impact in your country whenever you are so most probably guys most of our participants here are filipinos ayan mabuhay and magandang gabi ayan okay so this is a beginner's class guys so i will be uh, don't worry we won't go really uh, too technical in our uh, talk for today. So we will be uh, separating, separating progressive, progressive web apps into three words. So first, let us define what is progressive. Progressive is something that is uh, currently advancing. It's the, uh, It developed gradually towards improvement. It's ever-changing. It does it. It's continuous. And next word is web. So what is a web? So web, in the context of the internet, it, these are the pages accessed by the web browser. This, uh, these web pages share information through the internet. But I highlighted internet there because in here, when we combine these three, do we really need internet in order to use or create a web application? Most probably, yes, we would be needing internet to create in a web application, but do we really need internet to use these uh, creations. And lastly, an application. So an application is defined as interrelated programs that perform a specific function. So we have a, a program, it's a set of instructions. So we have different programs put in together and needs a certain goal. So combining it all three, we have here highlighted words. So it will be easier for you guys to understand the three main words for you to not forget about progressive web applications. We have improvement, information, and interrelated. So all in all, how are we going to define progressive web applications? So progressive web application or PWA is to access improved interrelated information. So these improves operations uh, in applications, whether or it, whether it may be for your personal use or your business ventures. Ayan. Okay, so progressive web applications is just, it's more than just an application. So you might be hearing different words about the different types of applications that we are using today. And I will be guiding you in the differentiating each of them. Ayan. So first uh, vocabulary that is related to BWA, we have native or sometimes it's commonly called uh, mobile. Uh, the pros of a native or mobile is that uh, these applications are built on a specific platform and it is accessible offline. So for example, you are a web developer. I, I 
guess most of you guys are developers here, mostly front end, and you will be building a specific platform for your client or your personal project. So for example, you want to create your own mobile app, but you only want it to be accessible in Android, for example. And then the third is it enhances brand presence. It enhances user experience because it feels uh, exclusive. It feels like um, it's only it's only limited, something like that. And it can be installable in whether Google Play or Apple Store, which enables more interactivity because when you install it, it's already there. So you don't have to go back and forth uh, to search for the application again. It's just right in your phone. So before we go to the prompts, let's move on to the next kind of application, which is the web application. These applications can run anywhere across any device. And with the advent of technology, uh, it, it's, it's also functional on these types of devices. For example, Galaxy Folds and other, for example, uh, two-in-one laptops, and etc. And however, the... Uh, the, a good thing about web applications is that it takes less storage, takes less capacity, less in size, and it is browser dependent. So you don't have to install the web application on your phone. And however, the cons of a web application it, that, is that it requires internet and it has less device functionality features specifically app notifications the push notifications uh, sometimes some web applications cannot access uh, your functions like camera access mic access your geolocation it depends on how it is built and it is less interactive because you always have to go to the browser or you have to type in the url or copy paste the url just to go to that web application and uh, a downside of a native mobile application is that it requires installation and uh, it will require you an internet for you to install it. Uh, it. It goes hand in hand, the pros and cons of each uh, application. So it's more larger in storage because it has a lot of uh, resources in the application for it to function offline. Uh, and it also takes, takes longer development for the developers and it needs to be designed separately design and develop separately and including in here as well that uh, native and mobile applications are are harder to let's say to update it's all you always have to update the applications unlike web applications you have it's easier for the developers to update so it's automated for you making revisions it doesn't doesn't interrupt uh, the users whenever you um, update the versions of your application. And you might also hear about hybrid applications, a combination of a native and a mobile, a native and a web app. So hybrid applications are uh, visible on app store so they can be accessible online or on the web. So I hope you guys understood that. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. And let's ask, so now you know the uh, three different kinds of web applications. However, which app is better? So according from a code burst, uh, these, these applications, the mobile and the web, uh, they have good um, numbers in terms of uh, user interface, user experience. They say that 63% of users access the website via 2G network. But think about it this way. How about the people in our country, in the Philippines? Do you think um, these numbers are reliable in our country? Uh, does everyone have access to the internet? Yes, maybe data, but for how long? And I know the Filipinos are one of the active like people in uh, social media. However, it's, it's really expensive to have internet in our country and uh, next is 60 percent of users set home screen icon so this goes for the native or, mo or mobile applications a lot of users prefer uh, having their apps installed so they don't have to go back and forth in accessing them and uh, 
an increase so 40 percent in user engagement when you have a native or mobile application so let's see how about for progressive web applications let's uh go back to how it started more than 13 years ago already so uh, if this is your first time hearing about progressive web applications, yes, that's how long it's already been existing. Uh, in here in the Philippines, we don't really see much of these developments. That's why we have PWA Pilipinas, the community here, celebrating its second anniversary and helping you guys to be informed about these new technologies. So the progressive web applications uh the word is actually coined and authored by two people we have alex russell a google developer and francis berryman also a developer and a designer both of them authored the word the progressive web application so to simply put the progressive web applications are a combination of the applicate the types of applications that i have mentioned a while ago and it gets better wherever so i have mentioned to you guys um the three eyes if you can remember the three eyes let's see so one of them we have we have information and the other one is so you guess the two guys well i'm waiting let's see who will remember it okay so it gets better it's progressive it's ever changing it's advancing and Along the way, through progressive web application, these enable developers and the users to have no restrictions, just more additions. So it rhymes. No restrictions, just more additions. It's always improving, uh, going along with this new advancement, with these new frameworks. And uh, for progressive web applications, one thing that I have noticed is that it focuses more on the user experience side compared to the user interface. Why? Because it focuses on how it's efficient and how it's accessible to the users not not on what it looks like so that's what the progressive web application leans towards too and it's also free progressive web applications are free unless the developer um is uh wants you to pay for it maybe that uh it's free so free means fast reliable, engaging, and evolving. So we have another word for you. Progressive web applications are free, fast, reliable, engaging, and evolving. So moving forward, let's identify the advantages or the pros. So I love memes and hopefully uh, these memes will help you understand more what progressive web applications mean. So going on the first meme, it's mobile first. So it's, uh, again, as I have mentioned, it's really hard to, you're already on your phone and you have to go to your browser just to access Facebook, wherein you can download it. Or for example, YouTube, uh, YouTube is a progressive web app. Yes, you can access YouTube offline as well as Twitter, Starbucks, Instapay, uh, and the like. And this is what its uh, advantages is that you just have to add it to your home screen and then that's it. You can access it anytime, anywhere. And second is I have a game for you guys. So number two, I believe that progressive web applications is like a coffee. And one and my favorite coffee brands, baka naman. And one of my co uh, favorite coffee brands is Copico. So what do you think based on the... I don't know, packaging or one of the ta uh, taglines of Copico. It's blank in blank. So progressive web applications is blank in blank. Okay, very good. So the first person to answer is Micaela Garcia. Hi! She says three in one. Yes, progressive web applications are three in one. Uh, bakit ka pa maghahanap ng iba kung nandiyan na lahat? O, di ba, full package na. Tsaka, ayan. Huhugot sana ako, pero. <laughs> ayan, and then number three. It's developer-friendly. Uh, yes, it's really um, biased. Not really biased, but it's, it's convenient for developers. It's developer-friendly and it's also SEO-friendly too. So, if you are an expert in SEO and it's your first time hearing about PWA, uh, you have to uh, try it out, see it for yourself. It 
it, it helps us innovate more along with SEO as well. And uh, number four, it helps improvement in speed. Uh, who who uh, who who in here wants to have slow internet? I believe no one, right? So, as you can see, I believe uh, that's what we're going to react if we're experiencing slow internet. But I believe for us Filipinos, we're used to that, and we have the patience for slow internet. But with progressive web apps, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. The application. Uh, doesn't require an internet and it can be accessed fastly through caching okay so let's identify the cons now there are two disadvantages and if you guys have noticed another disadvantage feel free to chat it in the comments below so let's share this knowledge to one another so the two cons that i have put here is that first uh some hardware for transaction, for example, an online payment transaction hardware varies according to the platform, varies according to the kind of platform that the PWA will be utilizing. So it doesn't, uh, however, sometimes not compatible based on my, what I have researched. So it depends. And second, it drains battery power. This is also, it, this also depends because it depends if you have more research meet more resources it means you have more caching to do it uh the application loads a lot of requests and responses fetching data and it really will really drain your battery power so that's one thing for developers and the users if you want to use uh, pwa or for the business owners if you want to have a product a product that is built in pwa that is something that you have to look out for so the capacity or the uh, storage. So let's let's explore. Uh, do you think that my YouTube channel can be a PWA? So you can scan this on your phone. You can see it on your browser. And let me know if do you think my YouTube channel is a PWA. So if you don't know, guys, I do content creation. I do entertainment and educational videos and today we will be identifying if the YouTube platform is a progressive web application. So don't Google guys. I know you will Google. <laughs> so let's see guys for our viewers. We have 11 viewers on YouTube. I don't know how many on Facebook. Hi guys, thank you for taking the time. So have you tried the QR code? Okay, while waiting, let's move on to the next. So I have laid out here two types of web browsers. We have MS Edge and Google Chrome. Personally, I use MS Edge. And the correct answer is yes. So Tristian Pitogo, I think yes, that is correct. MS, uh, MS Edge, sorry. The YouTube app or the YouTube web app per se is a can be a progressive web application. So you might be noticing something popping out on your URL on the right corner. There is like a bookmark, the star is the bookmark, and you will be noticing this symbol on the top right. This is the install icon, and when you click it, it will prompt saying install YouTube app. So publisher is the host name or the web, uh, the URL, the website. This site can be installed as an application. It will open in its own window and safely integrate with Windows feature. And then you have two options to install or not now. So if you feel like, especially I, I have heard, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that we will be having another typhoon soon, soon in the Philippines. So if you feel like uh, anytime the the typhoon might hit and you you feel like the internet will be gone any moment soon. So you can install your applications from the browser into your mobile phone or add it to your home screen and then you are good to go. So it, it saves all your, it has this cache and it saves everything. And especially if you're watching a tutorial, a tutorial video of mine, <laughs> or you're watching other YouTube videos that you want to watch, but however you feel like the, you'll be, or you have less data left. So you just do add to home screen or in your computer install. So for Google Chrome, this is what the interface looks like. Although sometimes it's the same in MS Edge where and they have two together. It it also has a QR, QR code in MS Edge and in Google Chrome, as you can see, it has a QR code and install icon as well. So next. 
there. Is it that? Okay. So here is an example of a progressive web app by one uh, by the community lead of PWA Pilipinas, Andresito de Guzman. He created this PWA app for the museum. I think. Uh, yeah, the, the museums here in the Philippines, but I think particularly in Manila. And I have screen recorded my experience scanning the Q QR code from the screen and it loaded on my phone. So this has the feature of uh, camera. So it accesses your camera, whether you're online or offline. So let's watch it. So as you can see, there's a camera. And... Wait, let me put there. There, as you can see, I like, I think milliseconds, it's just, it already detected the image. And that image, it says that it is a retablo, an upright panel, intricately carved, the description of that masterpiece. And you have lo learn more and hide info. So let's watch more there. And then, oh. Sorry, guys. Let's try to pause. Okay, and then it already also detected the bust of Ricardo Carnicero and Spolarium from afar. That's how awesome progressive web apps. And I don't know if you can hear it, guys, but it also has a Spotify pl uh, playlist inside the web application. This is a progressive web application. You can access it offline. And so how are these web apps built? So the, uh, this is the architecture of a progressive web application. So starting from the left, we have the application going to the service worker. Later, I will we will describe what a service worker does. And we have two ways to uh, gather or connect or process information requests uh, or responses, either through cash or through network. Okay, so what do I need in order to create a uh, progressive web application? So first you need manifest, not to manifest that you want a progressive web application, but you need a manifest uh, let's say instruction or program and the manifest uh, is in a JSON file and it saves to you the purpose of this manifest is to save to use to use your home screen and on the right it will be having keywords for you to easily understand the uh, purpose of manifest is to um, display the appearance so it will help you uh, have it on your home screen and the next is service worker this is an API or application programming interface that catches important assets and files. So a while ago, I have mentioned that we will be we would we should always consider the resources or the data that we will be using in these applications. So the smaller capacity, the better for it to uh, to have a efficient speed, and it manages network network requests and it is in a, a js file or a javascript file and to simply put as uh, the purpose of a service work uh, worker is like a skin and bones and the service worker is really important in creating progressive web applications because these uh, handle the offline capability of your application and you will be also needing just a fundamentals of front end or web development so you have html css and javascript so if you already have knowledge uh, in these three things for web development you can already create a progressive web application that's how easy it is for you to start creating your own so how are we how can we create progressive web applications from scratch so you will be needing a code editor of your choice so for me i'll uh, i will be using visual studio code and the browser of your choice uh, most of you might be using google chrome because uh, you'll be having your tester or your checklist so we have a checklist uh, it's a, a lighthouse to be able to test whether or not your web application is 
passes for it to become a progressive web application. So for me, I prefer MS Edge better. And but it also has the extension of Lighthouse. And if you have everything, if you have these requirements already, then you will be able to uh, convert your web applications, your passion projects, everything in your portfolio that is web related or or includes just mainly HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into a PWA or progressive web application. So one of the tools that you will be learning in this uh, next few days in the whole month of August is about Workbox. So Workbox is also a tool. These uh, this workbox is com uh, mainly focus focuses on a uh, service worker and it is written by Google engineers that help you generate the service worker of your code. So if you're having a hard time uh, identifying what type of a service worker to use or is your first time uh, doing the syntax for it, Work workbox is there to help you improve the performance, the resilience, and enhancement of making it into a progressive web application. Okay, guys. So we have, wow, we, we have strong uh, live viewers here tonight. I know it's already evening. How are you guys? You have 10 viewers in YouTube. How about in Facebook? Hello, guys. Ayan. I think I'll give a shout out first. Hello to Loretta Gutierrez watching in YouTube. Hi. Okay, guys, so here's our surprise for you. Uh, I know you're expecting that we'll be having a workshop, but uh, we want to really help you uh, understand progressive web apps, and we want to uh, really challenge you on how you will be creating your own. So, hi to Gelford Penaranda in YouTube. Hi to Janelle Suzanne in Facebook. Hi to Christian Nathaniel Murillo Manlapus. Pa shout out po. Shout out, Christian. Ayan. And we have a surprise for you. So uh, this workshop will be exclusive for the first uh, 10 people who will be commenting uh, PWA at 2. So again, the first 10 people to comment PWA at 2 will have a uh one-on-one -on -one, uh session with me on how to create a program app programming how to create a progressive web app from scratch and i will be giving away prizes for you guys because i believe that uh, when we have a workshop it will really take a lot of time especially with the prepping the coding the debugging process so we will be giving uh we will be maximizing our time with you guys for the pwa community and for our viewers tonight wow so we already have one two three and four participants both in facebook and youtube so we have six more to go so this is for free uh, we will be getting your name guys and i will see you we will be announcing the date for this so Wow. Thank you, guys. So I'm excited to meet you and uh, learn more about progressive web applications. So don't worry. This is just a beginner class. We won't be using other tools such as Workbox or other frameworks. They just This is just vanilla uh, JavaScript. And I will challenge you on how are you be able to use this as a business. Our goal here is to help you innovate and create applications, not only for the benefit of yourself, but for us to be able to help other community as well and other industries. So with that, what will PWA be in the future? So tell me guys, if you can see the Philippines, do you think here in the picture, uh do philippines have pwas already in the picture based on the picture okay so while waiting do you believe that progressive web applications are evident or are you one of those people who uh it's just the first time hearing about pwa kira says no how about the others based on the picture Okay, let's wait. How about our Facebook viewers? How are you guys? Okay, so it's really obvious, guys, that 
that uh, PWA is not really that, um, how would I say, uh, widespread in in the Philippines, nationwide. Rafael Pepiton Isla says, this is the first time I'd heard it po. Yes, and actually guys, uh, on my experience, I've heard PWA from PWA Pilipinas themselves. And uh, I really, uh, I'm really impressed of their passion in building the community in, in order to help us and to help you guys learn about these new technologies because it's really helpful not, not only the community for the betterment of our country and I thank you. <laughs> Just joking. Okay, so with uh, knowing how progressive web applications can help us, before I give you further detail into that, uh, technically, I will give you an idea on how we're going to be able to use it in the future and for your different business ventures, especially for the different industries. So what can we use PWA for? So first, we have e-commerce. So most of you guys are aware and familiar of the e-commerce industry. We have B2B, we have consulting services and customer services. So with those examples that I have given you, how do you think that you will be able to utilize progressive web applications? Maybe you have mundane tasks that you want to automate, that you want to, that you want to create a web app that you want to automate, and then you want it to be accessible offline. That can be the case. For example, for outsourcing companies, you can have your you, you can have create a PWA for scheduling your candidates. So for, for those people who are having a hard time connecting to the internet, you will still be notified whether or not they're available for a call the following day. And uh, next we have transport. So I have another three again. So you just, uh, I'm giving you memes for you to further understand. And transport, we have like currently we're in the Philippines, we're exper experiencing ECQ or enhanced community quarantine. So most probably for those who still, our frontliners who still need to commute, it's really hard. Uh, we, you can create progressive web apps to identify which terminals are available for them to line up to, also, as well as train stations. We already have a PWA for train stations. Uh, I believe one uh, PWA Philippines has created this already. And you can also create PWAs for checkpoint areas for um, if you uh, believe that in your uh, area there's still checkpoint areas and if you want to inform your relatives who will be going to your place that there's still checkpoints uh, around. So that's for transport. And next is for the education or academic sector. Uh, we have student health check. Uh, this is really relevant because not all students have uh, consistent access to the internet and it's really hard uh, for the uh, for the universities to know if their students are still okay or will they still enroll especially right now it's uh, the start of the opening of classes and it's already ECQ and it's really hard uh, for the students to uh, buy load uh, have internet some don't have don't even have uh, their personal laptops or learning resources and then you can with that you can create your uh, you, if you can I know the school portal uh, has a large size into it if but if you can create something that uh, has a less, less capacity so your students who are not always online although we have synchronous and asynchronous it would still be helpful for them to identify their status through a school portal and related to this is that you can also create uh, PWAs for learning resources since uh, in the here in 2021 and beyond, we will be maximizing digitalization. So meaning there will be less uh, paperbacks or less books or notebooks for the students to learn. Uh, most of us even uh, can easily learn by uh, watching, uh, you know, watching like audiobooks and such so maybe you can create a pwa for your school uh that that you can help your fellow students who don't have access to the internet uh still learn amidst the situation and next is health so in here we have vaccination sites that you can create converted to a pwa especially if you have 
if you if you feel like the community for example uh, they are expecting to get their vaccination today however with the lockdown for example only uh, they suddenly say that they're closed so and that they're already out right so with the progressive web application you would still be able to notify that person that hey this vaccination site is unfortunately closed it will reopen the following week or the following day so we, we will be wasting their time trend, um, commuting or transporting because i definitely know that the having vac vaccination is hard right now and most people go from really far places just to get vaccinated guys don't forget to get vaccinated so yeah and then next is contract tracing although there are a lot of web applications for contract tracing, but the question is, do we have PWAs for contract tracing? So that's the challenge for you guys. And with health, it's really, it's, um, it's a really important part for us to help uh, with technology is health. Because we can create progressive web applications for people with uh, disabilities. So the challenge here is how are you be able to create progressive web applications for those people where they, with the functionalities like uh, access mic. If they're having a hard time seeing, they can maybe use voice activation for them to access the web app without uh, having the need to use the internet. So that's an example. And I really put here this kind of meme to have a wellness check because it's ECQ. I hope you guys are still okay. Uh, are you guys still sane? There's. <laughs> I hope you guys are okay. And to follow with that, to add to it, uh, other other reasons why progressive web applications will never like go away or will always be there in the future, always progressing, always advancing, always innovating, is that it has these seamless integrations. So let me just uh, read it to you guys. According to Tech Ahead, it has, uh, aside from the offline access, it has seamless integration. It, the, uh, it really enhances further high user engagement. Because the target here, again, guys, is user, in, user experience and uh, interface. The goal here is how will, how will the developers uh, have this goal of, having the users to not be frustrated, just going to your app, downloading your app, how easy it is for, for it to be navigated without having to uh, look for a documentation or a user guide. And another uh, imp uh, impressive thing here is the cross-platform accessibility. It can be accessed on anywhere, on any device, anytime, anywhere. And again, it's easy to fix bugs and errors for developers. It has a lightning fast speed, but again, you have to consider the capacity of your web application if you want to convert it to PWA. Although we have, again, we have a tool such as uh, Lightning, Google Lightning, for you to check if your app is... Uh, passes uh to it to become one since it requires less capacity and it has high performance so expect in the next five years or so that hopefully with your help guys we would be able to really influence other developers around our country and around the world to create progressive web applications to to adapt to these new kinds of technologies and it would it will also it goes hand in hand you we will be able to help the developers make their lives more easier and help them uh, learn how to code uh, effectively and efficiently and you will be able to help other users um have a good experience with your creations as well and it has native app flexibility so whether you want it online or offline it's okay so it's up to the user uh how they want to use it so with that, I have given you clues on how are you be able to create progressive web applications. But are you? Do you really think that you'll just be creating this as a passion project and not imagining it to be used by uh, the community or the country? Because I believe uh, the people who are watching with me right now have the capability. 
uh, to create a web application. What more? A progressive web application. So I am inviting you guys uh, on our Impact Hackathon. This is our third vertical. This is on August 26th and August, until 28th. We have more than uh, 24 mentors who will be guiding you. I am one of them. We Our um, vertical is about health. I already have given you a clue on what you can create for health. Uh, it's up to you on how you'll be created, whether on code or if you want to create a prototype. A hackathon, guys, is not uh, doesn't always require you to have a background in programming. If you're good in marketing, if you're good in graphic design, UI, UX, you join because this is, will be a really good experience for you and you will be able to really challenge yourself. And who knows, uh, you might uh, be one of the winners. Aside from that, you will be uh, having an impact to the community as well. So I am inviting you guys. I hope to see you there. And that ends my presentation. Thank you so much for your time. You can uh, catch me on my YouTube channel at Cha Abe. I create entertainment and educational videos. And if you just got here, don't worry. This uh, this talk is recorded. I will also be uploading it in my channel in case you want to watch it. I create other tech videos. I'm also on LinkedIn, Athena at Cha Abe. Facebook page at Chaabe, Instagram Aldefe Abe, and you can check out my free resources or my repositories on GitHub. I don't have much there yet, but it's coming soon. So thank you so much, guys. And here are my resources in case you are curious. I have YouTube, Geeks for Geeks, Medium is a good source. We have Devante. So Devante, it has a complete uh information about the pwa from introduction until the future so this is one of my big resources we have software brothers jwb development and d zone thank you guys i cannot hear you <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> first and foremost, thank you, Acha, for sharing your knowledge to the community. So, meron ba tayong questions from any of our 